My name is Matthew Todd and welcome to Inside the Scale Up. This is the podcast for founders and executives in tech looking to make an impact and learn from their peers within the tech business. We lift the lid on tech businesses, interviewing leaders and following their journey from startup to scale up and beyond, covering everything from developing product market fit, funding and fundraising models to value proposition structure and growth marketing. We learn from their journey so that you can understand how they really work, the failures, the successes, the lessons along the way, so that you can take their learnings and apply them within your own startup or scale up and join the ever growing list of high growth UK SaaS businesses. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Really excited today. Joined by Jeremy Redman from Task Magic. Good to have you here. Great to be here. Isn't this amazing that we can do this with this soft with these softwares? Yeah, absolutely. It's really good. Yeah, we've got a big distance between us and, and time zone difference as well. Yeah, we're we're still able to have this conversation today. How cool is that from across the pond? Yeah, no, no, we we take it for granted now, but it's it's impressive. We do, we do. So I, I, that's a long way of saying. I am so happy to be here. Yeah, likewise. And I'm really looking forward to the the conversation. And, and to kick things off, do you want to give people a little bit of background? You know, who are you? What, what is Task Magic? Every time I'm asked to give a little bit of it, I, I always think the hardest interview question, um, like when I was when I was at uni, I'll call it uni for you, university. <laughs> um, when I was in college was like, tell me about yourself. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, that's the most complex. Like, what do you want to hear? Because like, if I really told you about, I would, I would give you a diatribe of like 18 minute story and that's just going to waste time. But like, um, I'll give you this rundown that I give. So, uh, born, like born into nothing trailer park. Do you have trailer parks over there? You know what that is? Yeah, I know what it is, but no, we don't really have that, that kind of thing over here. All right. All right. Great. You just like throw them in the alley. Like we, <laughs> get, get in your tents. No, no, no. Um, so, yeah, gr- trailer park, poor, broke, um, became an entrepreneur out of necessity. Uh, and when I was like 10, 11 years old, I started a sales club that was called like Olympia Sales Club. And I got a $3 for every item that I sold out of this magazine. Yeah. And when it got too much for just me to handle, I hired my stepbrother and a neighbor kid and I gave them a dollar for every item that they sold and I took two dollars so you're not thinking like how someone intuit like intuitively scaling a sales org right like at 11 and you're not knowing you don't know I didn't know what the word product market fit or scale was until I was like 26 or 27 yeah right so like seven eight years ago like I didn't know what these terms meant but you think I became this out of necessity because I grew up with nothing and like we couldn't afford a trip to Disney World, you know? Yeah. Like this was something that was like that I wanted to do that was a driver for me. And like fast forward a little bit, I felt so disconnected with technology because again, like I graduated high school in like 2006. So internet was a plenty all yeah. over the place. And like we didn't have it until I was like a senior in high school. So you're thinking, all right, all right, all right. I remember having to go over to like friends' homes to illegally download music off of LimeWire. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So um, yeah, again, like I always felt this disconnection with technology. Uh, so I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I could sell. I just didn't have that tech background, right? So yeah. I had to learn that piece. And I went off to uni and... Uh, at Michigan State. And even then I had to go to like, I had to start from the bottom, which was like a community college thing. Okay. So like it took me six years to get a four year degree. And cause I wasn't really motivated by it. I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but growing up with nothing, you kind of think like, what are, what are the stable things you, yeah, you kind of yeah. do? It's this weird dichotomy where you're like, um, all right, I got to get like this piece of paper. I know it will help me. I know it was something that always drove me. And so first person in my entire family to go to college. Uh, and then I kind of like chased a paycheck. I feel like, yeah. like at working at the top places to launch your career, um, lists, because again, growing up with shit, you're like, all right, like I need a good paycheck. And I didn't really have the idea for like my tech entrepreneur background. Yeah. I think it's important to w- not rush that as well. Right. 
Yeah, right. So, uh, so often people rush it and are like, I just want to be an entrepreneur. And it's like, no, dude, there's so much experience to be gained in the fuckery that, oh, sorry, like the, in the, in the, in the crud. Do, do yeah. you swear on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So like, um, in the fuckery of like this stuff that like people do, like the experience, there's no bad experience ever. Bad, no. you can learn from just as much from a good experience as you can from a bad experience. Right. And so on and so forth and everything in between. Yeah. So um, like I worked for like a like a like a top public accounting firm, like um, one of the big four accounting firms, which is based in London, I think. Um, and well, I don't know if you're from London proper. Near, near enough. <laughs> near enough. OK. okay. Yeah. And um, so like I, I worked for this company, essentially got fucking fired in eight months. Like this was not working out, right? Yeah. Like this thing. So, and I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this form of business much. And like I was 23, 24, 24 at the time, 24, 24, I don't know. And then I started working for like the movie studios in Los Angeles um, in some consulting capacity. And that was really fun uh, for a little while. And then I ended up getting fired from that job. And then this pattern started to emerge. We're like, all right, why are you so horrible working for other people? Like, well, what's wrong with you? You know? Yeah. And it just became like, cool. So now you're 26 ish and you haven't worked for a startup. You haven't done these things. You haven't had this idea. Maybe it's time to force the issue a little bit, yeah. you know? And so I was like, all right, I don't have the idea still. Right. Cause I'm not going to run with some, just any dumb idea. Yeah. And like you said, having the patience. Um, but I, so I worked for my first venture backed company in Santa Monica, um, and they had raised like a million dollars in venture capital. This was back in 2013, 14. Yeah. So like where a million dollar raise was like really good. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, not these hundred million dollar seed rounds that people are doing now. Yeah. It's crazy. Insanity. So, uh, so yeah, worked for my first venture backed company. Um, I was 25, 26, something about that. And like, I was the ops manager and I was learning tech. And I remember, I'll never forget this feeling. The first week there, I organized the pay structure for 3000 contractors across the country. And it was approved by the founders and I was employee like five or six or something. Yeah. And they were like amazing. And it was the first week that I was there and I had presented this thing and they approved it. And then it affected 3000 people across the country. Wow. And you're like, what? Is this real? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because I just came from a consulting firm that like you had to do your line item on something and just stick to that and yeah. make tags. And you're like, no wonder why I was getting fucking fired. You know, like th this is a drug. I, I was making a third of the money working for this startup that I worked for the consultant firm. Yeah. So like for me, that was always the thing. Fast forward like six months, that company went kind of out of business. And I was like, all right, but coming from that business, I learned that I had the idea now. And it was like a digital business card exchange. Okay. Simple. Keep in mind that this was 2015 ish now. So like it wasn't so prevalent, like these types of things. Yeah. And um, I was able to start that company and not being an engineer myself, uh, like I didn't know how to code. Right. I yep. didn't really know how to design. Um, so I was like, OK. And I didn't really have the money to like afford any any anybody or any any engineers. Yeah. And I played every game you could. Oh, go to co-founder dating and find a technical co-founder. Oh, my God. What a waste of time. Like <laughs> do, I found these 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 early stage like no code tools, like just like WordPress. Yeah. Right. And all these plugins and Zapier was around to connect some things then in 2015. Um, but it was very early. Yeah. So like I started gluing all these things together, type form, WordPress, and it was like an 80, it was a WordPress website and 84 plugins. Wow. And I was able to cobble, cobble Joe, these things together and pivot that company into like 14 different things and monetized at least five figures at a stage. Okay. So it was like a few hundred grand I was able to get. Yeah. Um, and then that allowed me to hire my first engineer and I went to like design school 
like and started working for like companies in like UX and UI design um, and then kind of bringing all those skills together. And what came about from that was like a no code app builder. Okay. Like, and I go, cool. This is what I was meant to do. Yeah. Right. Going back to that 11 year old kid who didn't have access to technology and who just cobbled Joe some WordPress website and 84 plugins like this no code movement, the early yeah, no code yeah. movement was this is so empowering. I want to share this with other people. I want to show other people like how empowering this is. Anyone doesn't matter what you come from, what you look like can have access to these tools. Yeah. Right. Like you can be, you can be a tech entrepreneur like I am. And I'm human garbage, you know? So like, it's funny that so many people make excuses and it's, it didn't take me, I was 20. I was not making, when I turned 30 years old, I'm 34 now. When I turned 30 years old, I was making $15 an hour. Yeah. Garbage, garbage. Like $15. So many people want to make 15 grand a month by 30. Like 15 grand a month by 23. And you're like, I didn't have any of my shit figured out. None of it. You know, so like the through line of my life has always been like, it's always taking longer than I want. Yeah. Right. And now I have a Tesla paid for in cash. So stay patient. Yeah. It takes time to build the skills. It takes time to get the experience. It takes time to find what works and find out what doesn't work and they're all stepping stones on the way, aren't they? Everything, man. Like, again, I know it was such a long story. And I said, I was like, oh, it took 18 minutes. And it's like, I actually took like 14 minutes. So um, uh, you can edit or chop that however you want. Um, For me, it's been about like always taking something from some experience. Like, as long as you're not sitting on the goddamn couch, or sitting at your chair, like do something, learn a tool, go to Notion. I'm looking at it right now. And it's like, go to whatever tool and learn a tool. Go learn something, how to project manage. You can become a product manager in a weekend, a project manager anyway. Like, and then start learning and building upon it. Like there's no excuse today. No, it doesn't have to be the end goal. You don't have to know what that is, but just keep heading in the right direction yeah and it's i don't even know if it's heading in the right direction the wrong direction right it's like moving like constant state of movement right like just move go and then you quickly figure out you don't want to go down that way so then you go hey just go the other way right like don't go that way anymore go that so it's not even about making the right choice or just staying it's a going Cool. Just don't stop moving. You go need that direction. perpetual motion. Yeah, we're going any direction because you'll figure out this direction sucks. And you yeah. know 100% certain you don't want to go that way. Yeah, no, I think that's really, really good advice. And you, you remind me of the careers advisor at, at school, right, which basically gave you the question of what do you want to be, which is you know, you only get one choice as to what yeah. kind of career you have. And that also defines you at the same time. Yeah. It's like, I, I would like if they asked, what do you not want to be? Yeah. Like, because so many people sit there with question marks and you have 80 things that 80 vocations that you can make, right? Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever is 189, whatever. There's a million, a million, a thousand things that you could be right from a plumber to an accountant to an electrician, whatever, whatever it is, to a banker, yeah. I don't know. And as people retire, you can suck up that space. There's so many things that you can be. And it's like, cool, I don't know. Don't fucking give me you don't know. You know something. You know what you don't want to do, yeah. right? Do you want to be a plumber? No. All right, cool. So that's one less thing you have to like use your bandwidth of. Yeah. So like, cool, you know, you don't want to be a plumber. Do you want to be an accountant? No. All right, great. We know you don't want to be this and this. Cool. So focus on these 187 things and yeah. you start dwindling, but don't sit there confused. Don't sit there going, oh, you're looking at 189 choices. No, you know, you don't want to be, you can, you can immediately go through that list 
and, and check off 120 of them you don't want to do. Yeah. And now you're making that perpetual motion piece. You're acting and you're going, I don't, don't, don't. People don't think that like saying no to an opportunity is doing anything when it really is clearing the path to the thing that you do want to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's really good. That's really good, dude. You got to chop that up. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep you that. You got to chop that up. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that bit in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's that's a really good way to, to view. You don't have to know what you want to do, but if you know what you don't want to do, then start experimenting from there. Yeah, right. Like, that's what it is. It's just rapid experimentation from like, dude, so many people just rush into life, right? Where it's like, oh, by 30, I need a kid and I need a whatever or whatever. My yeah. wife now is like, because she's in her early 30s, 31 ish and you're like all right cool she wants a child she yep. wants a kid <laughs> and you're like all right and i'm a couple years older so okay maybe it's time like, maybe we got to do this you know what i mean i know yeah, yeah. the i know the oven expires you know yeah so it's like i get it let's try this but like i didn't do that at 26 or 27 or 28 or 29 you yeah. know like and people just like you can't just do everything because people around you are doing it a certain way or the, this is the hard part, Matthew, Yeah. which is, I think the people you surround yourself with, if they're just average, average mm. isn't a bad thing, right? That's why yeah. God made so many of them. Um, like it's, it's people you're influenced by, or if you look at a huge collection of people around you at, you know, dude, college and everywhere, you're yeah. thinking, oh man, I'm the outside. I'm on the outside, and this feels weird because you're the weird one, because you didn't get the job that everyone else did right outside of college. You worked at this startup no one gave a shit about. Yeah, and yeah. like I was that person, and most people, dude, I'm telling you, I map the, all the kids I went to college with, uni, all yeah. the kids I went to university with. I've been doing nothing. I'm I'm jealous. <laughs> Yeah. But like you don't know that going through it, you think no. like, oh, this person's running this organization and I want to do that. Then when you're 21, 22 yeah. and like even when you get out, it's like they got a better job than me. And you're like, what's that mean? Project that out 10 years now when that person's b- b- average as fuck. Like, yeah. and you're you need to know that your path is different than everyone's. It's okay to respect that average path, the below average path, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, so many people shit on careers or career paths. It's like, no, that's your career path. Own it. Do you want to do that or did you get stuck in doing that? Exactly. So if, that's if you, the difference. Correct. Like if you wanted to do it, then and that makes you happy, absolutely do that thing. Because yeah. that's what that's all that matters. It doesn't if but if you're ambitious and you're you're a kid I remember looking back, man, going like like I was a year older, remember, because it took me six years to get a four year degree. I was like a year, year and a half, year and a half older than everyone. Yeah. I thought that was so monumental then. Yeah. And now it's like, the f- what the hell is a year and a half older than some? What is this? Yeah. What, what game is this? Are we playing? So like, you never know, like, you just need to have like, more of the macro view, or like the big picture view of things that you're doing and like the career that you're going on. Um, yeah, before you get it, like, figured out. Like, don't worry about having it figured out. Just don't fucking sit there, you know, do things. Yeah, 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 exactly. Always be yep. learning something about what you, you do and don't want to do. Absolutely. Do and don't want to do. Yeah. It's so important you figure out what you don't want to do that's just as valuable. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, yeah, on to task magic then. What is What is task magic and how did that come about? Yeah, so Task Magic um, is an automation software uh, that essentially helps people automate manual repetitive tasks. That's that's the that's the the tagline. Yep. So, um, but how it's done is really, 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 really cool. So you know, there's other automation software out there, and you have to learn triggers and actions and api connections yeah not that any of that's hard that's how i got started it's it's good to know these things yeah um and i was originally like consulting and we we have our own 
it's under V1's name, but we have our own Zapier app, right? So we know the challenge of like submitting something to that. Yeah. Um, and I've used Make or what used to be Integromat or all these other automation softwares. And dude, Make or Integ formerly known as Integromat, uh, was like so complicated. I was like, this is insane. And then I was like, but I'll do it. I got it. So, and then I learned that like other people knew the value of software automation, like other small yep. business owners and individual entrepreneurs knew it, but either like didn't have the time to do it or learn it because they're running their business. You yep. know, they're, they're making the dough, Matthew, at their bagel shop, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like they don't have time to go, what can I automate here? You know, they just don't have the bandwidth. Yeah. So they know the value of it, but they don't know what they can automate exactly or how to do it. Um, so I was just originally consulting on this. And I noticed people like n n real non-technical people would give up because it's like, mm. OK, fine. And we built like a form to make it really easy just to ingest what they wanted to do. Okay. So the, we had these consulting sessions where we would go, cool, what do you want to automate? And it was like 15, like 30 minutes. I'm like, we can do that, that, and that. Cool, so put it yeah. in here. And what we learned was like, they were making like a loom video or a screen recording or a screen capture of the thing that they were doing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. And when it got too much to do these by the hundreds of these videos that I was watching this video and then making the automation, you know? Yeah. So then I was thinking, cool, wouldn't it be cool if like, they made that video and that was doing the automation. Mm. Like, wouldn't that be cool, Matthew? It would. If, it like, sounds good. Yeah. They can make the video and it's actually doing the thing. It, it can do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Kyle, my CTO, um, was like, all right, we could try to do that. So for the last like nine months of our lives, we've been building this thing that they, people can click record button. Yep. Do the do the manual automation one time, hit stop, and then schedule that thing to run. Right? They can enter delays or filters and do certain things yep. in between the steps. But once they hit record, do it one time, do that manual thing one time. And then once they're done, hit stop. And then it lists all those steps, all the actions, the triggers, let's say in Zappy or whatever. Yeah. And it just lists every step and they can edit it when things change or in 90 seconds, they can re-record that thing instead of dude, when Zapier fucking errors or like these other softwares error, it's like, you need to be an engineer, man. Yeah. Like, have you, you seen you these things? I've it's got like, some broken zaps at the moment and yeah, my background is in software development and I can't be bothered to fix it. <laughs> right. And this is the funny thing is the disconnection between the app developers for Zapier and Zapier. Cause I've gone after like gone after I've commented on Zapier support and it's like, well, this is their app. So you got to talk with them. Yeah. So you waste a day or two talking with Zapier support or you're on a four or $500 a month plan. Cause you want the premium support. Yeah. Right. And then you're now you're talking Zapier with a couple of days and then the other support team from the esoteric form builder that you fucking had a plug in yeah. for. So you're like, all right, cool. So I'm going to use that. And then you go, OK, so now I'm three, four days in all the zaps or all the automations are held when yeah. really if something changed or something aired, I could have just re-recorded it in 90 seconds and it would have all been there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's like doing it all over. It's not doing it all over again. It's just doing the thing one more time again. Don't go yeah. in and error fix and like bug fix. They're not engineers. So yeah, it doesn't matter. Really interesting. I, yeah, it is. And it's like, um, well, it is interesting to me, but thank you for that. But no, no I think that's a good insight that actually, yeah. although those tools make it easy when it works, when it doesn't work and when you want to get it set up right for the first time, it, it's quicker just to do it again. Yeah. Oh, man. That's a, gr oh, I didn't think about it from that insight. It's good when it works, but when it does, yeah. the fact that you, ha now I'm going to have to chop this up. You know what I mean? Yeah, Give yeah. it to my 19,000 email list and go, look at Matthew Todd agrees with me that you're all doing it wrong. So I appreciate this good content. No, no, you're welcome. But it's, it's good. It's, it's, you're right. It's at that level. When you're mm -hmm. trying to set this stuff up, you don't want to have to 
you're thinking at a particular level. I know what it is to do that task. And, you know, all these systemization guys can tell you to stick it in a Google Doc or record a Loom video or whatever it is. But yeah. as soon as you want to automate it, you've got to then, like, go down a level to yeah. attempt to connect this stuff up together. Well, what you really want to do is just say, look, I'll show you how it's done. That's what I want to happen. Right. Like, and that, see, we wouldn't have known, right? And the great thing about this is that we're on a different level. So that, like Zapier, Make, Integramat, whatever they are, Automate.io, they yeah. all do it the same fucking way. Yeah. Which is trigger, like literally, I think and everyone I think had to have stole this from Zapier, right? Zapier is yeah. the king. They are the queen of all of this. So, but be, they're going to be, they're going to plateau, right? Yeah. So meaning they're a six or seven billion dollar company, which is amazing and, and insane, right? Yeah. But what happens is, is they've now created a behavior, a learned behavior over the last decade and or more, yeah. right? Decade, I think, where their current customers, the thing that's gotten them to $7 billion, right? If that is, I don't know what it really is. But if that's the thing that got them there, they're not going to just switch it up and change that learned behavior no, for a thousand. Right. It's ingrained. This is how I want to do it. I'm not going to go in and do this. So it makes it interesting that Zapier either comes and goes, I'll give you 60 million for that thing, that record screen. Yeah. Or we ha we start carving out our niche because they're not going to, they're not going to do it. And like, exactly. it's they a can't funny, do it. right. Because that so, will completely change their positioning, their right. message, everything. And that's how you create a differentiated product is not by doing the same thing that they do but a little bit better it's a completely different perspective although right. there's lots of commonality underneath it right i'm gonna send this interview you're right 100 i'm gonna send this to every investor out there going just listen to this before you talk to me <laughs> just listen to this and this takeaway that's great great insight 100 because you're right i mean it it was not something forced it was something learned it was a it's something that we've learned with dealing with customers one by one, right? Yeah. I think we mentioned this before we got on, but it's like, or maybe it was at the beginning, where it's like you're manually doing things with people, yeah. right? You're manually onboarding. You're really learning the customer or learning where the problem fits within the market. And so many people don't do that. They go, uh, that's not scalable. Yeah, I yeah. understand that right now. It shouldn't be scalable yet. You're working on a problem. You're not solving anyone's problem. You have a million people who like your stuff, yeah. who don't love it. I'd rather have 110 people that absolutely love it because that's at least a place where you can grow solidly versus a million people who downloaded it and then don't like it and don't use it every day. Exactly. It's that difference between the nice to have and the must have product isn't it if it's nice to have then it's kind of disposable at the same time but it, for the people that love it it's a must to have it's an essential part of their how they work right and that's another thing like i thought this was so dumb one time when i heard from an investor oh we like to invest in enterprise solutions that they can't live without yeah. and you're like yeah motherfucker yeah me too i would love to have that thing good luck figuring that out yeah you know what i mean and it's been a long journey it's now been two, three years since the time I heard that. And I now start to think that we have that thing, you know? So yeah. it's just like constantly serving the customer and learning with your first few. Learning with your first, say, 100 paying customers and getting them to the product that the product stage where they love it and they yeah. can't live without it. And how, how can I, it sounds weird where you're like, how can I weasel my way in to where I'm learning what they're doing and you for you cognizantly make your product integral to what they're doing. Like it's helping them, yeah. but you also know they're not going to cancel it, cancel your subscription price, regardless of whatever it is. If you upped it from 20 bucks to 400 bucks, yeah. they need it. So yeah. that's what you, where you want to get as a founder and a product person. Uh, absolutely. And I think, but I see too many startups that, do a bit of that market research, talk to a few people, get some nice feedback and design a solution and then tie themselves to the solution 
more than to their customers, to their audience and to their problems. And then it's mm. like they're trying to find an audience then for their product that they've built versus sticking with the audience they've got and trying to make the best thing for them. Yes, dude, we were using a full, like an intake form in Zapier and like other things to learning what businesses did. I, at the beginning, Matthew, I was knocking on doors. Do you know what that, does anyone know, hello, knock, 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 uh, can I help you? That's what knocking at, no one, yeah. that's a lost art, okay? Yeah. I would, when I went to invest, I would talk with investors and I go, nah, like I'm, I'm busy doing what? I'm knocking on doors for a hundred bucks a month. I'm literally yeah. like building a relationship. I need these people to let me in, right? Guard down here. No, not trying to say, just talk to me about what your problems are, what your problems. Are. I yeah. think I was world-class in like process design and automation. Like I said, I've built three six figure companies and one seven figure tech company from nothing using no code tools and everything was glued together with like automation tools. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I could do anything I think, or a version of anything. Yeah. So I took that expertise, the product and the automation stuff. And I thought, all right, I can help any business. They just don't know. So I'm going to help. Right. So I'm yeah. essentially going to give my consulting for free. They just sign up for our platform, 200 bucks a month. Right. Like whatever the price was, I was trying to make some price that yeah. was not losing so much money or it was worth the white glove service we were giving. Yeah. And um, just learning about what their businesses do, I learned that some things can be automated, some things can't be automated. How do we build around this? Where other yeah. people go, you want to know what I think would be cool? This product. And they spend six months building a product and like yeah. there's no audience for it and you're struggling versus going to a set of customers you give a shit about yeah. and thinking, cool, what are your problems? Dude, you will you their guards will be down. Yeah. Like what are your problems? Just 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 bitch at me for like 15 minutes. Do you have 15? How about I be your therapist? Let me yeah, see yeah. if I can help. I know I can do this. Let me see if I can help you. And I lost so much time, money, or my cost. I, and so many people will go, hmm, that wasn't worth your time. Oh, was it? Because I'm staring at fucking seven figures ARR and you're sitting there on your ass. And it took me longer. Right. Like, yeah. and people don't want to do those initial 100 steps. And step 103 is a million dollars in ARR. You know, they yeah. just don't want to do the first 101. No. And I think, like, what you were saying about doing the things that aren't scalable i think a lot of people hit that think oh yeah yeah that makes sense yeah yeah we we do that but actually they're they're not doing that in any way shape or form because they're still too scared yeah. to talk to engage with their audience and go that extra mile yeah. oh not it, it, it's funny it's like the and it, we saw we say the extra mile and that's the adage and it's like it is it is the worst extra mile it's like an extra mile on top of 10 initial miles you know what i mean yeah it's like it's like an extra half marathon on top of yeah. the marathon. Because it's like, that's what it is. So, like, in this messaging, right, that I put out to both our customers or prospective customers or just people I'm trying to help, other entrepreneurs, it's like, get out of this business if you don't want to run a half a marathon with your first customers yeah. for nothing. For nothing. Like, for, yeah. you're going to go, dude, this customer, get, this is what it was. These customers would give me 200 bucks. And I would work on their stuff all week saying yeah. that my entire week was worth $200. How many people, and I didn't get that money. The no. business got the money. Like I, I didn't pay myself anything at the beginning. Yeah. So like, how do you know? Everyone thinks their time is so valuable, but like, dude, I've been broke. I've been broke, literally poor for the last seven years. Broke, yeah. poor. And it wasn't until this year where I could buy a Tesla or something. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like something could, so like I sacrifice all of this, like for seven years, like 30 years, 30 years old, 30 years old, yeah. 30 years old, 1550 an hour working for a cinematographer running the operations of his business. And then I was six figures in debt. Okay. 30, skip to 34. 34 yeah. years old is what I am right now. No debt. 
making more than $15 an hour. Yeah. Net worth of eight and a half million dollars. And Tesla paid in cash. Because I took the last four years and knocked on doors. If you approach anyone like these get rich quick scheme shit and like the yeah. Amazon FBA stuff that goes on and fucking scammer and NFT shit, yeah, yeah. dude. Dude, no one, everyone is looking for the quick thing, the four month thing, not the yes. four years knocking on doors. I was knocking on doors for four. The tried and true way to get a Tesla is to knock on doors and learn about problems every day for four years. I guarantee everyone can do that. I guarantee it. I guarantee if you give me or Matthew, five years of your time and you want to knock on prospective customers doors and learn up and just hear out their problems every day knock on doors physically when i say knock on doors i mean actually walk to their businesses and knock on yeah. their doors and make a relationship because those decision makers will be right there if you want to do that for five years guaranteed you have a tesla it would be quite hard to fail if you did that and didn't learn something and didn't manage to solve a lot of problems on the way, wouldn't it? Right. So like, exactly. That's the point. It's not, you might only have to knock on doors for three months to figure yeah. out a problem that you can build. Don't stop knocking on doors until you find it. But no. if, but people want it, dude, people want it. I'm learning in five weeks and I don't get it. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want, if you don't think this is a marathon, this is a marathon when you're crawling over broken glass, right? Like yeah. you don't know where the glass, people are just shattered glass and you're like, I'm 34. And it's like, I'm just now starting to like pay myself. Who, it, if you're 23 and you just graduate college, who goes, this is going to take me nine years to make any real money. Yeah, yeah. Who would do that? Yeah, it's a decision you've got to make, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, no, I didn't I didn't want to be an electrician. I didn't I didn't want to be a fucking accountant, man. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I actually did know I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Right? But I didn't have the foresight to think, just go figure out their go talk to small business owners and just how about how about this? First principles, just ask about their problems. Don't go on Twitter and ask Twitter fuckers what their problems are, dude. Those people no. are the worst. They don't, they won't vote with their dollars. They are, dude, I used, Matthew, Matthew, I used to try to sell people on Twitter, like no code people on Twitter. Yeah. And it's like, I want this red alerted on here that they are the cheapest people ever. They say they want something, but they don't. They won't pay for it, what it's worth, and they yeah. just complain. We had a we had a plan like years ago. It was years ago now, and it was like eight dollars a month. And these people were like they had just paid eight hundred a month. They wanted the service that was like eight hundred dollars a month. That's what they wanted. Yeah. Some of these we would drop hundreds of dollars, if not low thousands of dollars, to help them, and they were like the worst. And that needs to be out there too. So like just for other entrepreneurs trying to chase stuff, chase real people in person, figure out the problem, then build the software to scale it. Like yeah. the, you can get the software piece. That's great, right? You can then go after and get some uh, some a niche audience on Twitter or TikTok or these types of places. These platforms are great. The guaranteed way to do it is talk with real people on Main Street USA or Main Street Berkeley Square. Yeah. yeah. What, what's like a good Main Street there? What is it? Downing. Downing Street. I know oh, that don't, one. Don't talk to people there, but you know, you'll, you'll find some <laughs> other streets. 100%. Fine. What's a, what is the, what, like we have, is it Main Street there? Is it like, not, do you also use that term? Yeah, we, we know what it means, but not really. Yeah, mm. we wouldn't really have, have that as such. Do you have like a like a equivalent like a, an equivalent street like Main Street? Do you say like First Street 
or Broadway? Not so much. I mean, you, you kind of get the high street, but that's just more like retail oh. stores and things. But oh yeah, high street. We well, got have like West End, right? Or is that just yeah. like the theater? Di- yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. yeah. So go talk to people on West End. You know. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. No, I think it's it's interesting. Yeah, I think as as well as speaking to that low price point thing and and people, you know, not valuing that as well i think if you're not having those real conversations then people won't value and won't appreciate the problem the value of the problem the value of having it solved yeah um and i think you know a lot of founders i see when they start to test out different price points and if they're not getting the traction they're looking for they'll start to do things like, I'll say, well, maybe it's a bit expensive. They'll start comparing themselves to others and they'll keep cheapening the offer, cheapening the offer, making it cheaper, thinking that's going to be the thing that suddenly gets them traction. But actually, yeah. it's because they haven't done the thing that we've been talking about, which is really finding that audience and solving their problems. That's why no one's buying, not because it's you know a few pounds or dollars more a month. No, correct. It's and at the early stages, it's about can you get them to open their wallet at all, right? Yeah. Like, is the problem worth anything? Because so let's say you're you're a newbie and you're untested, you don't have the CV. You see, yeah. I'm doing. I didn't say resume CV. You do so well. like you have this thing where it's like, okay, so now you're here and you don't have much experience, and how do you how do you sell your services? It's like cool. Yeah. Let me let me prove it to you first, then open your wallet. I'm going to do this. Right. So like that's why it's good to have the the human to human interaction Yeah. where you go. All right. I'm no worries. Like you don't have to pay me up front. Like I'm going to try. I'm going to see if this works. If it works and you like it, then you get your value. What you tell yeah. me what it'd be worth to you. I'm going to see if I can. Sell. So you spend a couple of days figuring it out like. Dude, if you need a couple of days where it's like you need money those couple of days, you're fucked. Like it's like yeah. you need to because what you can do again, acting and not acting, going back to this. This is the title of this, it seems like. But you can doing work for nothing for two or three days versus finding spending six days finding anyone who will just take your call. If I said yeah. you will pay for nothing, I, I'm just, I built this thing, built a software, whatever, that will help address your problems, I think. I think it could work yeah. for a bagel shop. You know, I think it could work for a pizza shop. Will you give me 15 minutes to just yell at me your problems? And like just getting and talking with customers, talking with them, getting in the door. Those are the challenges at the beginning. Then you can go, yeah. you don't have to pay me nothing up front. Just give me... I'm going to help you. Let me see if I can address these couple things over the next few days. Let me see if I can build something. Let me see if I can, if our software can fix this. If it can't, no worries. If it can, you let me know how much you would, this is what this would cost. Now you're doing, you know, like, like price estimation and like you're really testing the market value and what the customer will pay for you. You're running so many experiments, right? Yeah. What the, and you're just learning versus if you're like two grand, no, I'm not taking anything less than five grand a month for this. Great. How many conversations are you going to have, especially when you're untested? Yeah. Right. Versus let me see if I can help you. Let me see if I can help you. Wor- worst case scenario, it's a very cheap therapy session because you're just diarying all your problems at me. Like that's yeah, great. Yeah, and you'll learn where the value is. You'll learn whether right. you've... Save them, you know, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, a million, or whether you've grown their business. But you'll learn that if you really embed yourself within their business and their world. Right. So, like, and we have it because ours thing is like you're running this thing. So it's so it's like three minutes. Okay, great. So it takes you say two minutes to run it. Right. It's like two minutes if you have to do it because we're timing right. Essentially, how you're doing it. So it's like two minutes every time it runs once. So we know how much time you're saving. Right. So we go, cool. And you want this to run. It takes two minutes and you want it to run 20 times a day. So what is that? 40 minutes a day. Okay. Yeah. Call it 45 minutes. And then they add one other thing. That's 20 more minutes. So like an hour a day. Now, who would normally run this? How much do you pay them? Uh, 25 bucks an hour. All right, cool. So 25. I can do the simple math. Twenty five dollars a day. How, How often do you run this? Every single day this needs to be done. Okay, so 25 times 30, right? 
So you're like, all right, yeah. so cool. So now you don't have to do it. You free up. You can also, so what's 25, to, what is 25 times 30? Uh, 750. Se- $750? Oh, shit. Yeah. So cool. Then I would position it like, all right, if I was, would you give me 200 bucks if I told you I could save you 750 bucks? Would you give me $200? And they go, yeah. Like, yeah, I would. All right, cool. Here's the Stripe payment link. I don't have anything built. Here's the Stripe payment link. I just showed you how we could do this. What would you do? If I can't, I'll give you your money back. I don't need you. If you're just going to stay a month or two, I don't need you anyway. But like, it, it's not going to yeah. help me if you cancel this. So like, no, here's no. this. I just showed you what to do. But now you have, even if they don't sign up, you have all this data, all this sales process. You can hammer it all home. And then you have some target. Go to cafes. Exactly. If that one person was a coffee shop, there is eight, 18 million coffee shops in the world. Start yeah. talking to some others and go with the same thing and see what works, see what doesn't work and start pivoting and making changes to your pitch and product. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And you, you always learn something from the way they, they talk about their problems as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's a nuance in every time you pitch – you get better, you gain more confidence. Um, and trust me, I mean, dude, it's hard to sit there and like sell someone. It's hard, yeah. like I get it. It's the most weird, most odd, because it's easy to sit back on a keyboard and try to send an email campaign. And like, it's another thing jumping on a face, jump. It's one thing going face to face and asking for the clothes. Yeah. Right, like it's difficult. I get it. But your first no first dozen no's one would you rather get a a dozen no's or a dozen like absolutely i will i will yeah guards down you don't need to you're learning right do that only at the early stages but then perfect over time so then you'll perfect the close um yeah that's exactly what they should do Uh, absolutely i think that the the worst thing is is not the yeses or the no's actually but i think it's the Oh, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get back to you in a couple of months. Right. It's the polite that, no, the no that looks yeah, like a yes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, right. The maybe. And like, the, the maybe, right. And it's the same with like investors, stakeholders, everywhere. Where you need to get them to a no. So I almost approach it somewhat assholey. Yeah. Like, I know what you're doing. Now tell me the truth. Well, like, we don't really need that. Okay, cool. Great. Amazing. No, it doesn't really exactly. fit our thing. All right, you know, this we could, could have done this. You do away everything you learn real from your customer or an investor or whoever it is. You know how to suss that out earlier in the next stage or the next customer. So like you can yeah, and don't learn be something. To challenge them. Yeah, right. Well, you have to challenge at the beginning. You have to yeah. because you learn the real reasons why they said yes or no. You have yeah. to. So like, you know how to better sense that no or no to address it earlier in the process with the next customer or the next investor. Yeah, exactly. And if they say they need to think about it, if they say no, it's like, don't take the excuse that they give because, you know, especially over here, they're probably just trying to be polite um, and and find a way to get off the call without offending anyone. But it's like, well, work out why. Is it because they don't have budget? Is it because they need someone else's approval? that has the budget is it because it yeah. doesn't really solve the problems or they haven't got the problems that they said they did you know there's there'll be something behind yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that you can take into the next one absolutely and like another strategy is like obviously you can do a free trial but collect their credit card up front right we're like yep. i'm gonna send you the link to sign up right like i mean a lot of people like our vp of sales does it online grabs their information grabs everything and yep. you're like dude that's such a skill it's such an amazing skill that he has. Yeah. And you're like, man, I don't even know if I possess that, you know? So um, yeah. it's a, like building the right relationships, making the right steps and learning over time. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's a, a general theme for everything we've we've talked about about so far. Isn't it? Um, yeah. It's like yeah. every everything. Man, it's really good to have uh, some really good natural natural vibes matthew like that you you're really good at creating that it's natural vibes great work good no i'm glad no it's been a good a good conversation although i'm sure we could 
talk for hours more. I want to respect your time as well as make sure that we don't like overwhelm people. And I think we have got a really good theme going through everything we've talked about so far. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, of listening to your audience, being patient, asking the right questions and, and not being afraid to, to spend the time to really work stuff out, whatever that may be yeah, or yeah. whatever stage of the business that is. Yeah. Um, so, just, so just to round things off and, you know, I hope we do have a, a part two to follow this. Um, but you know, in terms of where Task Magic is and, and what you're trying to do next, what does that look like? So we're trying to release the freemium version of the product where you can download the desktop app um, and it's just obviously cumbersome and it yeah. will have limits, but it allows people to try it. Let's like the gateway drug. It's like the yeah. marijuana of our product. Like you want to get yeah. people hooked on that. So then they go into the harder stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, to make a horrible analogy, an amazing analogy, by the way, because that's what yeah. everybody, everybody wants to make a product that is like drugs, right? That you just need yeah. it. You need it in your system and that system being the business. So you're like, yeah, we're building that. We're building out the, the function to do that. Obviously, it takes resources. We're limited on resources at the moment. Um, but like making sure like we're raising at the moment, well, kind of secretly, Stealthily, Matthew, don't, yep. be sh- don't be sharing that. Um, no, I'm kidding. It's on this podcast. Uh, so we're making sure that we have that freemium version, getting people so that they can try it. Because right now, there's just it's just outbound sales and referrals. That's how we've grown. Okay, this yep. much. So you're like, you can't. You can request it, or you can email me at jeremy at taskmagic.com, um, and then I can give you access. But um, it's just in. It's all inbound referrals, referrals, yeah, and and us like emailing people. So like, and we've had enough there, but we want to get people giving a taste or seeing how it works. Um, and yeah, we'll yeah, do that, that once we've made some, Correct, yeah. So because we know, dude, we know now because we've done it this way, where people can use this, and if they could use it, even even an hour a month for free that you can use, yeah. right? Save an hour a month for free. And you're like, damn it, I want the, I want, you know, I want a few more hours. So you're like, I did. and boom, 29 yeah. bucks or 40. So that's where we're coming out with the product. More, It'll be more mass available um, here in the here in the coming months. Nice. Now it sounds like a really good plan. And I think it definitely sounds like it's not something that you rush into. You know, we all, you know, read things, hear things, product like growth and all the rest of it. And I think too many people then miss out all the important stuff about their audience and make it all about the product first. But it's it's still not, you know, product like growth, it's not just about the product. It's it's still about the audience and solving their problems, but just making it easy and frictionless for them to experience the way the product solves their problems. One hundred percent agree with you. It's not like I mean, this is inside the scale up. Like it, it, it is, it takes time to get to the scale up, right? Like part yeah. of that scaling up is doing the things that don't scale up, right? Like the, and it's so, it sounds counterintuitive, but you can scale up too quickly and your business will fail. It will just yeah, crumble. Absolutely. So like doing it, see, like if you think, I mean, if you come out with a product like this is, this product right now, I know for a fact, fact is not available, right? Like other automation yeah. softwares are available. Other predictive yeah. automations and these things are available. The way this is doing it and the way it's doing I know no one has done anything like robotic process automation, right? There's no applications I've heard from anyone anywhere. Yeah. You can, you'll be able to Google some like esoteric weird example Love some guy in fucking Brighton. I did another one um, yeah. like that has some WordPress website landing page. I get these all the time and it's from yeah, like yeah, investors yeah. or whatever. Like, what about this? And it's like, that doesn't even look real. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, great. Yeah. Go talk with them then, you know? So it's, it's funny that like, don't be, don't get impatient by other people's products build and grow you will get to the scale up and that 
is the secret of Inside the Scale-Up. And I think that's a great place to leave it. So, Jeremy, thank you very much for a very interesting conversation. I'm sure audience will, will agree with that as well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to catching up and seeing how things are going. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Inside the Scale-Up. Remember, for the show notes and in-depth resources from today's guest, you can find these on the website insidethescaleup.com. You can also leave feedback on today's episode, as well as suggest guests and companies you'd like to hear from. Thank you for listening.